Hi, I'm Voris Tanaka, and I thought I'd cover something that I forgot in the Photoshop class that I taught last week. For anyone seeing this out of context, I taught a quick lesson in Photoshop for people working on an elementary school yearbook. And there was one subject I was going to cover and I forgot, so I thought I'd cover that right now with the screencast. So, hope you enjoy it. The problem we're going to solve is when you've taken a group photo and someone has blinked. Now there is a very important prerequisite for fixing this problem. You have to have taken more than one photo of the group. Three photos is probably enough in most cases. And that's what the number I usually take. Uh, in this case I have two photos and in one of them two people are in the process of blinking. And in the second one they look fine. Now, in this case, it'd be best if we just use this photo and be done with it. But let's uh, make this sort of a contrived situation. And let's say everything about the top photo was perfect, except for the two people blinking. And the bottom photo wasn't so good, except those two people looked fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the faces of the people who are blinking in the top photo from the people in the bottom photo. First thing to do will be, we'll work on this uh, lady on the left first. So first take the marquee tool. You can use the rectangular one or the oval one. It doesn't really matter as you'll see. Uh, we'll just use the oval one because for faces, ovals fill a little better. And make sure you take plenty of space around her face and include her neck. That's pretty important. And we'll go to the move tool in the upper corner here and we'll just drag our selection from the bottom photo to the top photo. Okay, so now we have both of her. The first thing to do in order to blend uh, this uh, bottom image to this top image is to reduce the opacity of her, uh, her open eyes face. Now you see, if we go here, that the original photo is in the background layer unmodified and her face from the other photo is on its own layer. So what we'll first do, do is set the opacity of this face layer to just 50 percent so we can see both at the same time. 50 over in this opacity box and you'll see that her open eyes face is a little bit see-through. You'll also see it's smaller because I was shooting this uh, uh, just holding the camera in my hand. So let's make it a little bigger. It'd actually be better to uh, make the top photo smaller, but we're taking a little shortcut here. So let's put her neck matched up here and then hold down the shift key to keep her uh, the selection in proportion. Oops, and then we'll make it bigger to match the background image. And that looks about right. You can see why it really helps to have uh, this 50% opacity. And so we'll leave it... That yeah, looks about right there. Hit enter. So now what we have to do is blend her new face onto her old body. So to do that, we'll set the opacity of this layer back to 100%. 100. And already you can tell it looks almost okay. There's just a few things that are disjointed here, the balloons. And so we'll just take a look at uh, how this all works. And what we'll do to blend the two layers together is to use a layer mask. Now first of all I'll hide this top layer and you can see where the old photo was. And we'll show the top layer. So those are the two images we're blending. And you can see this oval that we selected that we'll have to blend in. So let's give this layer our layer mask. Go down here, click that, and now this layer has a layer mask. And let's zoom in a bit to work more closely on her. Now we'll get our brush tool, which is this tool right here. Now we're painting into the mask. 
you can see here if we zoom in that the mask is the one that's selected so any brushing we do will paint into the mask and so this mask is all white meaning we're seeing everything in the mask so we're going to blend some black in along the edges so let's make it a pretty fat brush and we'll need to make it as soft as possible shift left bracket makes it softer and then we'll start painting black now you see white is our foreground color we really want black so we'll hit X the X key and now let's start blending in these two layers until it looks natural now we'll keep some of her background head and just blend in some of her new head you see anywhere where it doesn't blend properly we'll just paint in some black this is an obvious case that we need to fix up you can see this oval it's hard to see here so that's a good blend you can see it a little bit here so let's hide that a little bit Our necklace here we need to fix up and it's looking pretty good already you can see a little bit of the umbrella and you can see this part is not going so well so let's hit the X key and paint white and we'll sort of start this area over again okay we'll make the brush smaller so we don't affect so much we we'll just hit the left bracket to do that hit the X key to paint black in here again so this balloon's looking a little funny here so let's just be really careful you can see her face is extending out a little bit hit X again we'll take that back so we'll just sort of fudge the balloon a little bit what would really help here is just for us to have selected more uh, more area here I didn't realize the balloon was going to be that much of a problem it was probably moving while I was taking the shot but for our purposes we'll just fudge it uh, I'm just seeing how this works here take that back again and this part's going to be a little problem so we'll fix that up later so I'm just going to be worried about this edge and right now I think it's basically close enough for our purposes if I was doing this for real I'd try to make that nicer by selecting more of maybe like this whole balloon area so right now it's looking pretty good and what I'll do now is I'll merge the two layers to make one image I'll just flatten the image so now because of that we can fix up some of this funny balloon problem here using the uh, clone tool the clone stamp tool make it small and soft so we can see some duplication here that we can just erase out fix up this area so not totally convincing but for our purposes close enough so now if we look at the whole group photo, and I won't worry about the man, uh, it would be the same process. And now it's fairly convincing. Everyone looks great, and her eyes are open. And that's how you fix that problem. Again, the most important part of this process is to make sure whenever you take a group photo, you take more than one shot, preferably three. That way, hopefully, you can just use one of those photos without modifying it. Otherwise, this is the way you can blend a great photo with someone blinking in it, along with that same person not blinking in another photo that you didn't like so much. So hope that helps, and I'll see you next time.